Welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we're going to continue our journey with Key Vault and we're going to hook it up to our observability stack um, using a diagnostic setting. So without further ado, let's get going. So any uh, most resources in Azure uh, support what's called an Azure Monitor diagnostic setting. And you can tell immediately if that resource supports it because there's a section here called monitoring and diagnostic settings. And this is a very helpful place to go when you're looking to set up diagnostic settings for the first time because um, each resource has different categories of logs and metrics. Of course, metrics usually is all metrics, um, but uh, sometimes it's not always that, but but this this screen basically is shows you the structure of what the diagnostic setting is. Uh, diagnostic setting is designed to attach to a any resource in Azure um, to select what logs and what metrics from that resource that that resource supports that you want to extract and to specify one or more destinations that you want to dump those. Uh, resources, being those logs or metrics. Um, and the, the three that are supported natively are Log Analytics Workspace, um, Storage Account, and Event Hub. Now, Log Analytics Workspace has, and we'll look at this in a little bit, but it has a really nice uh, queryability interface where you can go in and type SQL-like queries on your logs. Um, Azure Storage Account it, it has no query capabilities built in. Like it, it's literally just dumping flat files into, the, into your storage account. Um, so it's not super useful, but from like, if, if all you're looking for is like a governance, you know, ch checkbox to check off, then storage account's a great way to go and it's super cheap. Um, I usually go with log analytics for short term, you know, maybe 30 to 90 days of logs. Um, so that you know operators have a chance to go in and look and find things and look look under rocks and stuff like that using the user experience of log analytics um, but then dump everything into storage account for a year or two years um, and you know for basically for long term or cold storage um, another another option is this event hub and that basically is going to be a very flexible way for you to send these logs or metrics anywhere you want uh, because event hub is an azure service where there's a stream of, of, of events that are going across it um, and it's basically like a fan out mechanism where you can add a whole bunch of subscribers that listen to that event hub and do whatever you want with it so um, some of the uh, some of some of the third party tools that you might use um, like Prometheus or Grafana, you know, that, that stack would attach to like an event hub. Um, and you would, you would use an event hub adapter that would pull that stuff and dump it into, into that, um, logging, uh, aggregation stack, um, partner solutions. These are third party partners that, um, that, that publish their wares out there, um, so that you can attach them directly. I've, uh, I've never actually used these, but, um, if you have, uh, let me know in the comments and let me know which one you like the most. Um, if you have used one of these options, which do you prefer? Do you like log analytics um, or do you prefer to use Event Hub and dump it into some open source solution? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, uh, the resource that we need to provision using Terraform is called a diagnostic setting. So the Azure RM monitor, Azure monitor diagnostic setting. And basically the structure of this setting, we've looked at this before on this account, but um, you basically pass it in a target resource ID. Now this is a fully qualified resource ID path um, to any resource that supports this in Azure. And then you can add different destinations, storage account, log analytics, whatever. Um, but then the diagnostic setting uses these log blocks and metric blocks in order to um, specify, I guess what we we're looking at earlier, audit logs, Azure, if in the case of Key Vault, 
audit logs, Azure policy evaluation details, and then all metrics. So these two right here, audit logs and Azure policy evaluation details, would show up in as corresponding to a single log block here. And then the all metrics would show up as a sick corresponding to a single uh, block there. Now, a, a helpful tip, and this is, this is common when you're working with Terraform and Azure all over the place, um, sometimes the, the, the GUI is not the best way to figure out what needs to get plugged into Terraform. Um, so what I would what I would recommend is um, I would I would recommend you know using this JSON view where it will show you what is gonna is gonna get outputted in an in an ARM template and so this is gonna, this will help you to know what values you can put into the 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 Terraform resource. So we, if we look at this side by side, we see that we've got a category attribute here on the log block. Now, if we if we go down and we look at the log block, log block, we've got category, okay, boom. Then we have category group, okay, boom. And then retention policy, there we go, which is another block. And then we have an enabled, which is bool. So you can get a really good idea of what the values should be in, um, in the Terraform uh, block and resource just by looking at this ARM template that's going to be created. Of course, we're not going to use the ARM template. Um, this is nasty JSON. Um, we're going to declare our own um, HCL code, right? Um, but this is a great way to discover like, what, what the valid values are so that you don't make a mistake. Because, uh, I mean, I know with this one, when I first saw these category groups, I started by thinking that that was just like the category. Um, but, uh, but really, uh, and so I tried to put in audit into the category, it didn't work. Um, then I discovered, oh yeah, there's this category group thing and that's what it's going there. So in the GUI, when, when I check these category groups, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull it in there. But the categories will show up in a different in a different light in that way. So what I want to do is I'm just going to cr grab the audit events and the, the all metrics, and I guess I'll do the Azure policy evaluation details as well. Um, but first of all, I need to I need to go grab a sample of this. That I can that I can go retrofit, okay. So I need to add my diagnostic setting here. Let's clean this up. Key Vault, and we'll just call this the same name. I guess we can grab it from the resource main.name and we're going to grab the key. Oh, the example is actually using the key vault. Uh, interesting. That's pretty lucky. So now we need a storage account var storage. Hmm. So store, remember what I said? like the IDs are notoriously bad to look them up. So we are not going to pass in a variable for the storage account ID. Nope, not going to happen. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to, we're going to look up the storage account ID using a data source. Okay. So just bear with me. Uh, let's go find storage account. And we'll do a data source storage account. Bada bing, bada boom. All right. Now, if I go to, what am I looking for here? There we go. So when I go the observ the observability resource group for dev is what I want to go look at. So I want to use my storage account here. I think it's West US. So I'm going to grab that. 
the storage account name is going to be this and the resource group is going to be that. So there we go. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit and we'll just call this, uh, what should we call this? Observability. Yeah, there we go. Storage account observability. And so here we go, that's a data reference. So we got to do that and then we go observability and then we do ID. Bingo. And this, this is fine. Yeah, we, we can leave this the way it is. Now I can also add a log for, what was that little guy? The Azure policy evaluation details. We'll throw that in there too. And we want to enable these. Like why, why would we not want to enable these? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like why, why you would, oops, why we would set those to be um, disabled. Okay. So, okay, we, I, I think we have this all set up. Um, we are pointing it at the key vault. Um, we're using the key vault ID. We're pointing it at a storage account. And now, and we, we need to point it at the um, log analytics workspace. So let's go look, let's go look at that. I gotta go back. Oop, went too far. Here we go. So log analytics workspace ID. So I need that because we also have a log analytics workspace. And I think I'm gonna to have to look that up as well. Um, one thing I want to do before I do that, I want to make the log analytics destination type. We saw this in one of my Terraform provider release reviews. I just noticed that this field was there and I got really excited about it because I really don't like the Azure Diagnostics table. Uh, I want to use dedicated now, um, which will basically have each of these go into their own table. So we'll get to see that work. So I'm going to line up my scrimmage line here. And now the workspace ID, again, I'm going to have to do log analytics workspace. And we're going to look this guy up using a data source. And let's get that go in here okay so and it's right like that so the name of it is this and the resource group is also going to be the same. Now, the nice thing about the log analytics is that um, I've got the environment name buried in buried in this thing, so I can use I can use the variable environment name because that matches up with um, the environment the the environment for my my DevOps solution here. Uh, so if I want it to dynamically change, then we're good. Now the tricky bit is with this uh, with this value here. So if I'm going to have to pass in the storage account name as a variable, unfortunately. So we'll call this observability storage account, and in dev it's going to be one value, and in prod it will be an entirely different value, which is quite sad, but storage accounts have like the most fickle uh, naming requirements. It's just really frustrating. Um, this is the one for dev. And let me just go peek at prod. And this is West US. Now I, sh I should probably use a lookup but 
because this is a variable, um, you know, I'm, 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 I think it's acceptable that the the original author is aware of what region that they're deploying to, and they select the correct region storage account. Um, so that I think that's an acceptable compromise our observability storage account. So again, uh, log, log analytics, we don't have to change. Um, we, per, per region, it's, it's gonna be the same one no matter what, observability, but the storage account we have, we have to change per region, um, unfortunately. Okay, so there we go, there we go. There we go. So now if we go look at our key vault, we have a diagnostic setting there and it has been set up. So, so there you go. Um, we, uh, we successfully added a diagnostic setting using our reusable um, centralized logging, our log analytics workspace, our blob storage account um, in West US. Uh, and we, we, we have configured Key Vault to now dump its logs and its metrics, usage met metrics, into, the, into that observability stack. Um, so I hope, I hope you found this useful um, in both understanding the mechanics of Azure Monitor and how to use diagnostic settings to attach um, that, that uh, connection between your resources in Azure and the observability stack that that Azure Monitor has as a destination for those logs. And uh, yeah, if you, if you enjoyed this and you found it useful, please smash that like button. If you have not signed up, uh, subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. And ring that bell when you do so that you know when my next video drops. Really appreciate it. Uh, this was a quick one today. Um, Azure Terraformer, signing off.